Typically, this is what I'll do is I'll do the webinar first. And in this, <laughs> in this area right here, you'll see questions and uh, hold on, we'll look at that later. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and ask and I'll get to them when, after I do the presentation because once I open up the presentation, I can't see the questions. So here we go. Everything's gone. We're good to go. And here we are. All right, my name is Glendon Cameron with Conundrum Media, and uh, this is the first session on how to create digital products. This is going to be a little different. It's going to be really, really fun because there's going to be exercises. There's going to be things for you to do. So with that, let's jump into it. Now, before we go a little, before we get too far, let's talk about qualifications. 2009, July 17th, 2009. I began writing my first book. I didn't know what I was doing. All of this stuff that I'm going to teach you and talk to you about, I did not know how to do in 2009. So what I'm saying is, if you don't know how to do it, or it may seem a little intimidating, don't worry about it because you can do this. It's not rocket science. I'm talking from writing books creating audiobooks, creating ebooks, creating print books. It's easier now than it was in 2009. Uh, there was this big shift where it became much easier in 2012. So in other sessions, because this is what we're going to be talking about for this block of instruction from uh, January 15th to February 15th, and there will be a lot more going on in Hustle University because there's, there's going to be some overlap of some things. So with that, that's my background, partially. I always get this question, and I, I need, I'll just answer it before we even get to it. The money. My first 14 months as a person creating digital products, I made $62,000. $62, I was very impressed because going back to the point, I didn't do this before. So you can't, and that's a very short period of time to start essentially a new career and make, in my opinion, very good money. So those are my qualifications. I did it for myself and I can teach you how to do it. All right, lesson one. These are things that no one uh, taught me because what you will see is spend a lot of time on the ebook cover, go through the editing. That stuff is important, but this stuff is like oxygen to your lungs that I'm about to give you. Sure, the cover's nice, the editing, but it means nothing if you don't get this stuff here that I'm about to tell you right. It means absolutely nothing. I have friends who are languishing, who are extremely great writers, and they cannot get their products sold, their books sold, because they're going about it the wrong way. So lesson one is research, prep, sandbox time. Research, marketplace research. Well, this is the thing that I learned. When you create products for a marketplace that exists, your success rate is much higher than creating a product and hoping to find a market for that product. Now, sometimes you could create something and the market would just go, ah, we love it. We got to have it. We want it. We need it. We're going to give you whatever you want for it. The market will do that. But the better way to go is to figure out what the market will actually give you what the market wants when I wrote my first book about storage auctions I had intimate knowledge esoteric knowledge of the business because it wasn't as widespread as it is now I knew what people the problems that people were experiencing so if you have esoteric knowledge and you know there's a big market out there you know there's a big marketplace out there it's a little different but this is another thing that I, I did learn that was very, very helpful. Don't create one product. Create three or four. And one's going to do better than the other two or three. More, more effort, I know. But it gives you more diversity and a better shot at being successful. 
This is what you should think about before you think about a book cover, an album cover, uh, any of that stuff. You should think about your marketplace. That is the most important thing that you can think of. Marketplace is everything. It is... I, I, I'm struggling to find a word big enough to give you how important the marketplace is. I'll give you a few literary marketplaces. Mystery, uh, police procedure, thriller, romance. Romance is the largest literary marketplace in the world. And many people are like, oh, romance is crowded. Yet every year, new writers enter into that crowded field and their work is maybe not better, but it's different. And they do well. So before you think about what you have to offer, spend time thinking about marketplaces. Marketplaces are, the flea market could be a marketplace for your product. Say, you have a way of setting up a flea market booth in five minutes, and you can articulate that in an audio book, an ebook, sell it for five bucks. You know that these flea market people need help. I'm just throwing something out there. You know where they are. And you, know, you just figure out how you can package your product and take it to that marketplace and show it. And with the stuff that we have available today, the technology, I mean, just in my mind, off the top of my mind, you have this ebook, this audio book. You just go to the flea market with your smartphone, have the book on, in the email in your phone. It's like, hey, you know, I'll take Square take their credit card, get your five bucks, and email them their book there on the spot. That That's something you can do. Now, in the beginning, you know, people are like, I don't want to go out and meet anybody. I don't want to talk to anybody. When you learn how to talk to people and meet people in marketplaces and make deals and build relationships, it will transform you as a person. And when you come to higher deals, bigger marketplaces, you'll be more comfortable. You can't go from swimming in a small pond to jumping in the ocean and not be, you know, it's just you know, not be comfortable. You know, take baby steps. Work with the people on your level. But the you know, another marketplace is YouTube. YouTube is a huge marketplace. People going there looking for videos. If you're going to do videos, videos can be uh, they are a form of digital products. People pay money for videos. Now, the only videos that people will pay big money for are videos that solve problems. But YouTube's a marketplace. Uh, we'll talk about that later on in Hustle University. But really, really spend a lot of time asking yourself, what does this marketplace need? Not what do they want, but what do they need? That's just been a lot of time with that. Now, the second most important thing after marketplace is a platform. Now, YouTube is a platform and a marketplace. A podcast is a platform. A thriving Facebook page is a platform. You, these media platforms, and you know, I know it seems like they're crowded, but they're really not, are a way for you to get more exposure. I did a spree cast one night um, and I got like 50 subscribers on my YouTube channel in an hour. So when you step out of one platform to another platform, you introduce yourself to new people. So you want to think marketplace first and some type of platform. And I'm kind of going to have to connect the dots for you because it's going to seem like I'm going out of order. But I have to tell you about the marketplace first, then the platform, that place where you can say, this is who I am. This is what I have. This is my story. This is how I can help you. You got to have that because it, the things that I'm teaching you has totally changed how I do blogging. And we'll talk about that later. But you don't have to write every day. You don't have to create this blog. You don't have to do that stuff if you have a platform. If you have a platform that can get you, say, 500 subscribers in a month, okay, then when you send out your email, you're sending it to 500 people versus you're doing 500 blog posts and hoping people find them. 
That's what many people do. I did that. I had three blogs. I was writing every day, fingers all cramping up, back hurt. Writing a lot, like writing three to five hours a day is very physical, if you didn't know. It can be very physical. I've actually cut back to one to two hours. But I was going nowhere, and I was working myself to death because my strategy was wrong. I didn't have a strategy. I was just like, I listen to people. Hey, you know, you got a blog. Just write. No, 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 no. I would have been better writing one blog post a week and spending all of that time that I spent writing on marketing. If I spent all that time with just one blog post, at one point I was doing three and four a day. So if I did one blog post a week and ignored those other five to 20 I was doing a week, I would have been much better off. Because that goes back to the platform. When you have a blog post, you're better promoting it for a week or two than writing it, then forgetting about it, then writing another one. Because the common knowledge is that the more you write, you juice up the search engines, and they're like, oh, this blog has all of this activity. We got to send a lot of traffic over there. Then Google said, mm mm, no, that looks spammy. So we're not going to send any traffic over there. And this is another thing about having a platform. Google is the gatekeeper of the internet. If you get Google deaf, which means they just unindexed your site. So when someone goes to Google, they can't find your site. If they have your direct URL, yeah, they'll find you. So let's just say you have some Google deaf. You get a little Google deaf, right? But you got a platform and you've got 9,000 subscribers. You still are trucking because what you can now do is reach out to your subscribers from your platform and say, look, I just got killed by Google, man. I've got blood on my shirt. So would you do me this favor? Will you let all of your friends and family know about me? And, you know, about 30 percent. Well, so you can continue to grow. You continue to have your tribe and you continue to build. And this this is real important because I had Google death and I didn't know it because I did some stuff real stupid. And I had one of my blogs <laughs> unindexed and nobody was finding it. But I put a link on the YouTube channel and phew, my traffic was actually higher than it was from the organic traffic of Google. I say all this to let you know that having your own platform using YouTube, podcasting, Facebook page, Spreecast, Instagram is a platform, Twitter is a platform. Pinterest is a platform. If you can use these platforms to put your message out there, and once again, all of these platforms are different environments with different rules, regulations, gatekeepers, and ways to mess up. So it is really, 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 really crazy. And um, if you are on top of your game and understand the platform is very very important to your digital product because see this is the thing say you don't really know what you want to do you're just kind of like I'm still thinking you can still build a platform and start introducing yourself using your personality as the product to sell while you figure it out because it's gonna take time to build some things so you go on YouTube and this happens a lot because I'm actually working with someone right now that built a nice YouTube following and they can't monetize it because they never thought to. It was never a preoccupation in their mind. And typically, luxuries once tasted become necessities, meaning that if you were telling your people that, hey, this is going to be free forever and ever, and the minute you put a price tag on it, they're going to revolt and they're going to poke you in the ass with a pitchfork and it's going to be red hot, baby. It's and you're like, what? I'm just trying to make a little coin. People are funny like that. So another part of this is be very honest. If you want to make money, there's nothing wrong with saying you want to make money. Some people are like, no, no, you know, I did this review and, you know, I'm not getting paid or anything. As if getting paid was like, you know, getting the like, you know, tuberculosis or something. So don't be that person. But the platform is super, super important. YouTube is my main driver for everything I do, and it's f actually not just free. It actually pays me a little money every month. So with your platforms like Instagram, um, 
Vine. There's a lot of stuff that's out there. Snapchat. All of these platforms do one thing. They bring people together. And when people come together and you have the right offering, the right stuff, they share your stuff. And that's the beauty of a platform. So you got to have that. The platform, the marketplace, they're more important than the product. Because once you understand your marketplace, then you know how to design your platform to bring people to your cheese. Now, once you've fleshed out your marketplace, your platform, pick one format. And this is advice from me to you. My first format was a print book because, you know, it was 2009 and ebooks were still like, yeah, ebooks. And, you know, until Kindle came out and made it real easy. And it's like ebooks were. I was actually selling more print books at one point than ebooks. I really was. But with technology, things change. So, whatever product you want to put out, whether it's an audio product, an ebook, Pick one platform, one format, just pick one, and then really, really do this. Hammer the shit out of it. I mean, you've got the, you see the guy with the jackhammer, he's like digging up the parking lot, and there's so many vibrations, her panties fell down. When you get your format, uh, whether it's audio, whatever, once you uh, get some numbers, you're going to increase your numbers. Like say... I give you the methodology. Say your marketplace is gerbils in Alaska. I'm making this up to make it fun. And you know the gerbils in Alaska like wheat biscuits. So you're going to give them their wheat biscuits. And you go a week and you're like, well, if I put out 10 wheat biscuits, they usually buy three or four. But to get the three or four, I have to do one podcast. So what you're going to do is for a month you're going to do four times what you used to do because see getting your numbers is an organic exercise no one else can give you your numbers only you can get your numbers no one else can get you because they come from actually doing stuff so now you're like doing it four times it's like well now you're selling like 10 wheat biscuits then next month you're going to crank it up to the power of eight which means you may literally be doing a podcast every day there is there and this is a proven tactic if you are, and this is for your platform, if you just go nuts with it for a year, you can build up a tremendous following, a tremendous email list, and you will be able to sell your product to more people. And one of the reasons for the one format, when you write a book, the format for the audio book is different, the format for the print book is different, and the formatting for the ebook is different. And then to add even more complexity, not complexity, but complexity to the fire is your book will read differently in each uh, format. Like a print book is going to read differently. And your Kindle book, your ebook is going to read different on the phone. It's going to read different on certain tablets. It's going to read different on a desktop. It's maddening because you can put you format your book, then go put it on another device, and all your errors and stuff will start jumping out because it's that different. It's amazing. So I tell you to do one format because if you try to do everything, you're going to work yourself crazy. Um, do one get the sales going and if you have to do another take some of the money from sales and get yourself some help because it's easy but it's not and what I mean is it's easy to start it's easy to build but I'll give you an example when you're uploading a book to Amazon Kindle it must be in what's called a Mobi file well everyone else takes EPUB which means you have to have different software to make the the Mobi file or you can upload a uh, word document but the format is going to be screwy but essentially keep it as simple as you can because when you start getting complex and adding layers of difficulty you shift your focus from making money to handling stuff that may or may not be that important now when you've got your marketplace you know which marketplace you want to give your wheat biscuits 
you've got your platform whether it's a YouTube channel it's a podcast it's a Facebook page you have to think of ideals and the thing is think of 25 you know do this tonight do this first thing in the morning think of 25 ideals of things that you can sell to certain marketplaces clearly you'll have to figure out what your marketplace is going to be because this is one of the steps that people forget they come up with a product and they hope to sell it and they don't know who they're going to sell it to and when you don't know who you're going to sell it to you don't know how to talk to them and when you don't know how to talk to them you create what's called generic copy and generic copy is kind of like blah or really it's like <sighs> oh wake me up when it's gone mommy it, it doesn't work that's one of the reasons I use uh, well actually that would be a lot I cuss because I'm that kind of person but I seek out a different kind of customer if my angry rhetoric and my profanity and me just sharing what I went through in an unvarnished manner appeals to you then the stuff other stuff I have is going to work for you because this is another thing that you have to learn with selling digital products forget about selling a million keep your goals originally 50 then you go to 100 then you go to 500 then you go to a thousand forget about this million you know this one of the biggest myths well take your ebook and put it on Amazon put it on Nook I did all of that foolishness and lost money I realigned myself and went back to the hammering and used my platform and I actually didn't put books in certain places and just really hammered and my sales quadrupled so understand People are going to tell you, you need Kindle or you need Amazon. I'm going to tell you, no, you don't. With what's going on with Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, you can create a following and using Gumroad and other online merchant accounts, take your following, put links under your videos and take them to your merchant account and leave Amazon out. And what's really, really cool about this, it's like say something happens, right? And you get on the news Gumroad can handle the same traffic that Amazon can. That's very powerful stuff if you ever need it. It's very, very powerful. But think of your ideals. Think of the stuff. I mean, spend some time really, really thinking about and just 25 because it's you know, and you'll get more. Every idea you come up becoming more. Somebody be like, I'm gonna have to euthanize you because you know you're looking kind of ugly. But it's a process and enjoy the process. Bring your kids in. It's like, hey, what should dad or mommy should sell? And they'll give you ideas and make it fun because when it's fun, you'll get more ideas. Because at this point, we're getting to, you, you are creative. You know, people are like, I'm not creative. And I don't know, I wish you, you know, we're all creative. It's just been beaten out of us by society. So by. I'm going to give you a few tips to reignite your creativity. It's going to sound real simple, but the stuff works. And that's doodling. Get your sheet of paper and just start drawing nonsense. Doesn't have to rhyme or reason. You'll be amazed at the ideals that start to come to you. Go for a walk. <laughs> it stirs creativity. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I get some of my best ideals in the gym and when I'm out walking. All right, so like I said, I'm keeping these brief and easy, and this is like the first section, and I'll give you some highlights of what's to come. We're going to get into the mechanics. I just wanted to give you the general overview of what you should do because many people create a product, and then they go find a marketplace, and that's really putting the cart before the horses, and the horses are still in the stable. When you have a good market feel for your marketplace, it's, it's really more like an introduction than selling. So that's your first section. For those who didn't make it, it'll be up in uh, Hustler U, the Hustler Mindset Project. And for those you didn't know, I'm trans. I'm doing a big transfer. You will be hearing from me. Okay. Well, that's the first session, and I am opening up the floors, not the floors, but the floor to um, questions. And understand, I'm, there will be more webinars. I'm not giving you the uh, calendar date because I'm still, like I said, a lot of stuff's going on. 
but there, there will be more webinars on this than probably anything else I've ever done. I know sometimes there's a delay, so uh, before I shut this down, I'll let you know. Okay, well, let's see. That looks like that is uh, no questions. Okay. <laughs> What's your take on out of channel promotion of digital products? Hold on. PR advertising. I see people do those things and some of them are very expensive. My take is if you're a little guy and you don't know what you're doing, stay away from them. There can be benefit. It really depends on what your plan is and what your goal is. If you want to get on Ellen or be on a local television show, those PR things are what you want because that's how they're going to find you. Um, but if you don't want that, because the thing is, I have no desire to be on any of those shows. So it really, really depends because this is another thing that you should take under consideration. When you build your platform, you don't have to pay for advertising. Um, advertising can work. Uh, Pay-per-click campaigns can work. There are people making millions. But I don't like to spend. Uh, I know someone who does about uh, 500000 a month. But I know their spend is around two hundred grand. So I don't like that ratio. I mean, making killer money. You know, it's got the mansion and everything. But... I don't like it because that's not my game. Uh, you know, what he does is totally different than what I do. And I know he's lost money a lot of months. So it really, really depends on what your plan is and what your goals are. Uh, this is from Chris Barron. Just got into storage auctions. Takes up a lot of time. Would this take away from storage auctions? It really depends on how you set it up. Uh, I will give you what I call an hour a day method. If you want to get into this space and you're not trying to unfocus from storage auctions, if you create a list of tasks and goals, and it's like, I'm just going to devote an hour a day to this, you'll be shocked at how much stuff you'll get done. So I think an hour a day is not going to distract from your storage auction business. So you can, you know, essentially I'm saying you can do both, but there has to be a process because you're right. Storage auctions are extreme time intensive type activities and it's not the buying, it's the loading and the sorting. When you come up with the ideas, what do we do? Well, there's going to be more webinars. That's what I, you know, that's what I was saying. This is just to get you started because there will be a lot more. Uh, this one, Emmanuel, what price and strategies do you recommend? Once again, this goes back to your marketplace. If there's a current marketplace and there are current products selling, you already have that information because, say, going to romance novels, the, the kind of sweet spot is like $2.99 to $4.99. So you know you will sell some at, clearly at $1.99, but if you try to sell them for $6.99 and everyone else is between $2.99 and $4.99, you'll sell a few, but people are going to look at you a little like, why is this book so expensive? And it's just an e-book. And it doesn't have as many words as this other book that's only $2.99. So your pricing strategy, if you're going into a marketplace and you're selling a similar product, is kind of already set. Now, if you are creating something brand new, then your pricing strategy is going to be totally different. But that's something else we'll get into later on. I'm going to say, okay, this is, uh, are more irons in the fire better? And this is Chris. When I got in the storage auction business, I always had multiple streams of income because you never know what's going to happen. So in terms of irons, it really depends. I would rather you had an ebook that makes you consistently 50 bucks a month 
then you know you're trying to do something that sporadically makes you money i think slow and consistent building stuff that gives you revenue is better than just trying to get money because um there's people here from the hustler university and there's people here because this webinar is free the other ones won't be and they already know about the speech of the opportunistic hustler and the strategic hustler opportunistic hustler is i'm gonna get all the money i can from any source that's a bad bad plan where if you're a strategic hustler you've got one maybe two maybe three things that you have a plan for and then when opportunistic hustling comes in you can take advantage but you still have your steady things going uh, this is from reginald Pryor. is there any specific websites where you can overcover niche markets for your digital books etc there's a ton of stuff unfortunately a lot of like there's the warrior forum they talk about stuff uh, there's a lot of black hat forums. There's there's a whole nother world of internet marketers out there that I'm not going to paint everybody with the same brush, but a lot of them clearly cross certain lines, and that's when why Google is always changing their search algorithm because these guys game Google like you wouldn't believe that they'll pimp Google and get like a you know millions and millions of hits on their blogs and make a lot of money then Google will shut them down because they made so much money they'll go out I mean these guys hire hackers they do all kinds of stuff so to answer your question more benignly do this think about what you know about think about what you like Peter Lynch made a lot of money by listening to his wife about well she went to Walmart she went here you know, concentrate on the stuff that you already know before you go off on the stuff that your learning curve is going to look like a hockey stick. Do both. Work on the stuff that you know and then spend some time researching new things. Uh, this is from David. Is rebranding private label right ebooks and such to create a new product something to stay away? Hell yes. Uh, Amazon is in the process of removing those. They work great for a few years, but um, definitely stay away from it. You would be better off spending the money hiring someone in the Philippines to create you a brand new product. It's, it's They're really cracking down on that. Yes, this is from Ed Harvey. Are the ideals the products that you wish to sell after researching the market? Yes, like I said, like you know, you're in the Hustling University, so we will get into a lot more of that. Because like I said, this is the first session. Uh, this is from Emmanuel Thurman. Do I need to be an expert to create a product? Nope. When I created my first storage auction book, I wasn't an expert. I was really a volume buyer. I wasn't an expert. I just was very observant that when people came to the auctions, they didn't bring locks. When people came to the auctions, they didn't know what the hell they were doing. They didn't know the procedure. They didn't know. So I wasn't an expert. I was a person in the know. Now I want you to think about that. If there's something that you know about and you know other people don't know about, it doesn't necessarily mean you're an expert. It just means that you know your craft. You you wouldn't consider like a mechanic an expert. It's just they have knowledge that the rest of us don't on a lot of things for cars because that's their business. So because storage auctions were my business, I knew a lot about stuff about storage auctions that the general public had no idea about. But I didn't really consider myself an expert, so you, you don't. I'm telling you, um, <laughs> my first book was jacked. I'll be honest with you. But my goals, I had two goals. Right, start and write the book was very, very important to me because a lot of people start books and they don't finish them. So it was to start it, finish it, and sell it. And I did that. And then I worked out the kinks later. But no, don't even, you know, you, you can spend a month studying the subject and become extremely knowledgeable about it that people may think you're an expert uh, this is from Scott Drummond what are the streams of income that you do had a brand new furniture website had some investment with, with other partners had another little store and was sad about it the storage auction money kicked everything else in the ass and the storage auction money had to bail me out of some stuff I would have been better off looking back, just focusing on nothing more than storage auctions. And even with the storage auctions, there was Amazon, there was eBay, there was Craigslist, there was our regular customers, and then there was the upscale garage sale, which was 
the stuff we couldn't sell online, we just open up the warehouse every weekend and people will come in and buy that cheap stuff. So even just doing the storage auctions, there were several different sources of income. Okay, that looks like all of the questions. Sure, no problem. And uh, for those of you who are here who are not in storage, uh, not storage, you, but in Hustlers University, I'm going to send you um, a link probably tomorrow. I'm not going to send it to you tonight. Or maybe I'll send it to you tonight. It just depends. But I'm getting ready to change everything. Big changes, big, big blocks of instructions. So I'll send you that information. And if you want to sign up, you will want to sign up before the 20th of this month. Because at that point, a new level of pricing goes into effect. Big difference. Uh, June Jones, can I ask what happened to the credit and business stuff you were doing? I'm going to still do it. I have to prioritize. Uh, it's still coming, but at one point I had four tracks going on. And there was people that were interested in one thing. or mo I really had to listen to what most of the people wanted in the group and then give them what they wanted. But that stuff's still coming back. It's just, um, it's coming later. It's coming later. All right, any more questions? All right, well, if one one's gonna pop in, then we'll shut up, shut it down. There will probably be in from June, from January, now, this is being the first webinar. There's probably gonna be 10 or 15 webinars in Hustler University from today until February 15th. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff. Uh, there's gonna be, I'm gonna finish up the resale stuff and I will speak on that. Love resale, did it for a long time. But when you uh, find out, like, you know, my first book, like I said earlier, I made $62,000. I was shocked that I could sit in a chair and write some words on a computer screen and put bundle it up in a book and make that kind of money. I was used to going out, talking to people, buying stuff, lifting stuff, moving stuff around. And due to the fact that, you know, I got sick and, you know, in 2010, I don't tell a lot of people this, I actually had to go back to the hospital because I had four bleeding ulcers because all the stuff that was going on. Um, my partner had cancer, the reality TV people, the books, the crazy stuff. So my health is of extreme importance to me right now. And I'm in good shape and everything is fine. But I don't know if my body could deal with all of the work I used to do. So I am uh, I am really working on this because the thing is, I can do what I'm doing. I did night. I can do that when I'm 80. I can do it when I'm 90. You know, and that's very, very exciting. And that's why I'm doing this, how to create digital products, because this is going to become extremely huge. There's going to be a lot of players in there. There's, there's, there's always going to be room for someone that's willing to bring something different to the table. Uh, this is Scott Drummond. How much time did you spend going to auctions every week? All right. Short story. I had a business partner from day one. She did logistics. Well, I did logistics. She did, you know, she was an accountant. She handled the store, eBay and stuff. I went out to auctions five to six days a week. I was out buying. That was my job to source. And we, when we started really rolling, I was buying 25 to 50 units every month. At uh, some point, <laughs> Professor Glenn, you cracked me up with that. When are you going to create the book, How to Be a Hustler? At some point this year, because it's actually on my board. I actually don't use a template for product creation. I am somewhat of a weird duck that I did a lot of reading as a kid and did a lot of things, lived in a few different countries. So I have a lot of information to pull from. And... I made the decision around Christmas time that I was going to focus on Hustler University, the Hustler formula. So everything that I'm creating is going to kind of be in that vein. Uh, this is from Jelani. How would you evaluate selling the combination of ebooks and paid webinars? I would say definitely because if you write a book, you can actually turn that into a webinar. And many people do. That's very common.
So is that it for the questions? It's 841. And since there's going to be so many webinars, they're not going to be that long. They're not going to be like an hour, an hour and a half, because that's just going to be too much. And I've also learned over the years that shorter webinars actually work better because people start tuning out around the 45 minute, 60 minute mark because it's just too much information to process. All right. Uh, with that, I just want to say uh, thanks to everyone that signed up, everyone that gave me your time and attention tonight. And for those of you who are in Hustler University, this will be there tomorrow. And with that, I say good night and I'll see you on the good side.